In physics and engineering, a shear force arises when two forces are acting on different parts of an object in opposite directions. It's different from tension and compression in that the two forces aren't on the same axis, so it's most likely to deform or fracture the object through a sort of diagonal motion, which we call shearing. A good visual example of shearing is this book. The top image shows the book as it appears normally. In the bottom image, I'm applying a horizontal frictional force to the left against the top cover, while the friction from the table acts on the bottom cover in the opposite direction to the right, leading to the diagonal sides you see here, making kind of a parallelogram shape. Another visual example I like a lot is a deck of cards. This short video shows my finger pressing on the top of the deck and moving the top card back and forth. This affects each of the cards below it to a lesser and lesser degree, once again showing that diagonal shear. Of course, you'd be right to notice that my finger is applying a force that's directed downwards as well as to the side, but only the side component, the component parallel to the card, is relevant for the shearing effect. Therefore, a more technical definition would be that the shear force is the component of the force that's parallel to the material's cross-section. Shear stress is defined in a similar way. Of the stress that an object experiences, it's the component that's along the same plane as the object's cross-section. The book and card examples are good for getting a visual in the situation, but a much more common, everyday example of this is cutting something that we do with scissors, or shears. When you cut a piece of paper, the blades are exerting two opposite forces slightly apart from one another. These opposite forces cause the material to fracture, which is what we view as the paper tearing.